What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Wild Nutrition Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Heskett, and I forget what episode number this is. I don't have it in front of me. Um, all right, let's get into today's episode. Actually, before we do that, a couple things. Um, one, make sure to drop down below in the show notes if you haven't already. Um, there's always free stuff down there. There's discounts for supplements through Seeking Health, through Legion, um, and levels. So make sure you check those out, guys. If you're trying to buy supplements, trying to save you a little bit of money there with the discount codes. But also, we have our Mastering Your Macros guide. But before you get into that, we are actually doing a giveaway. Eight Wellness Collective is doing a giveaway, and we are giving – Three months of one-on-one -on -one coaching plus three months of our prime group coaching program, or I should say hybrid coaching program, away. So that is going to be down in the show notes. Just go ahead and click that. I think that's going to be like the first link, um, but you'll see that down there. So make sure you go do that. And then as always, if you're not interested in any of those, please take a second, rate the show, give uh, the episode five-star review share it uh, to your social media channels as that helps push the channel out there. So there, it's really easy to share on Apple or Spotify. I appreciate that. Um, anyways, let, and then subscribe. If you're new, subscribe and welcome. Um, all right. Getting to today's episode. So I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with today's episode. Um, obviously we have another solo episode, but um when I, I did a reel last week, talk about food isn't magic. Um, and I think it's important to talk about this in long form. It was it's very hard to get some of these more nuanced conversations across in the short form that is social media nowadays. Um, you know, 60 seconds, 90 seconds at most. But even that, like if you take something that should be an hour long conversation and you're trying to do 90 seconds, it's very difficult to do um, unless you want to leave out all the nuancey information, which is why certain things go viral of like they remove all nuance, good food, bad food, and then you like eat it up like it's crack. So my thing with this is we will see supplements, colon cleanses, detoxes, eat this to heal your gut, things like that, where they have almost medicinal properties. And this isn't saying herbs and certain things don't have medicinal properties, but the way things are touted is really over exaggerated or it just doesn't exist at all. So let's take like most detoxes just don't work. They don't work the way they're intended. Uh, you're not going to get any results with them and they are just a total waste of money. Um, for example, one supplement in there, which is known to, uh, to support the liver is milk thistle. But then when you pull up research, there's little to no research done on milk thistle actually benefiting the liver. So it's just hypothetical. Like, okay, we have a hypothesis that this might work, but we have no actual evidence. You can take it, but it might be a waste of money. It might not be. Um, there's other things too where, okay, the evidence doesn't support what you are saying. So we see this a lot with the carnivore community right now of people saying like cutting out all of these things has totally changed my life. And if you have a gut dysbiosis, you have an issue where you do need to heal your gut, it can be a powerful tool. But just because it's the tool for the job right now doesn't mean it's the tool forever. And that's something else people don't realize is some of these diets, especially extreme diets, should be temporary. We're going to get in fix whatever, but then we put ourselves at high risk for nutrient deficiencies. So we need to get in, solve the issue. It's like, okay, well, we have to hammer all these nails into this board. Great. Hammer, 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 hammer. All the nails are hammered in. Great. Okay. Uh, next issue. Now we have to screw all this in. Well, I have a hammer, so I'm just going to keep beating. And this is where people get into issues of that tool is no longer working. It's not the right tool for the job. Now we need to go to the next level. So you see this with the carnivore community of like, oh, I cut out all this stuff. I healed my gut. Okay. There's some valid things there. That doesn't mean that's the right diet forever. It does mean that you had an issue. It solved the issue. Now we need to kind of start reintroducing foods, see what you have issues with, 
start actually eating foods that will support your gut. So if fiber was bothering your gut in the past, maybe we need to slowly reintroduce it to feed the good gut bacteria. And that's one of the issues with carnivore that they are not talking about is meats, not feeding the beneficial gut bacteria, which help by producing certain compounds, for example, vitamin K, um, in our bodies, it, it's very, very important for certain functions and they produce beneficial uh, compounds for us. So if you're not feeding that, well, they're going to die out and then other bacteria, potentially good, potentially bad, are going to take their spot. And that becomes an issue. And we don't want to point out also the one or two people that do well. For example, Sean Baker or Paul Saladino, who keeps changing every couple of years, his version of carnivore, because now he's including a ton of fruit and honey. Um, so we can always find Michaela Peterson, Jordan Peterson. We can find these handful of people who are like, see, they're thriving. I hate the Michaela Peterson thing because she has a medical issue. She had um, a lot of autoimmune issues. And by doing this, it helped re remove those or put them in remission. She says, but that doesn't mean for a healthy person, you should do what someone who's very sick should do. Same thing applies when I'm talking about nutrition, whether we're trying to build muscle, lose fat, improve our health, improve performance. There's different things we need to adjust in our diets to get the results we want. If we need to do heal our gut, we a lot of times have to do an elimination diet. So before carnivore was even a thing, like Whole30, some of these other things, you've removed a lot of food, almost to the point of like, we're just eating meat. And then we slowly introduce them. It's like we removed, then it's your job to figure out what triggers your gut, what doesn't, and add them back in. Well, we can't point like, hey, see, this sick person got well with it, therefore I'm... I just need to lose some weight. Other than that, I'm fairly healthy. So that's the right diet for me. No, that's going to put you at severe risk for nutrient deficiencies. We have, we have to compare ourselves or figure out the diet that works for us, not what worked it for this other person. And I've used carnivore with some clients. So I'm not saying don't do it, but we have to use the tool for the right job. If the job is hammering nails, then we need to use a hammer. But if it's putting screws in, using a hammer is not going to get you anywhere. You're going to break the screw, split the board open or whatever. It, it's Or you're going to whack your thumb. It, it's not going to be a good time. Carnivore is great for people who have gut issues and we wipe out everything. And then we do that for say 30 days. And then we slowly start reintroducing foods. It's great for that. Done it with people. It's very helpful. Not everybody needs to do that. Same, keto, same thing. Most people don't need to go into a keto diet. Some people have success with it, losing weight, but then we run into the issue of um, it's not sustainable long-term. You have to adjust your lifestyle to be keto. Like, Everything revolves around being keto now, almost like a religion, because most things aren't set up. Like you can't go to if your Mima is making you dinner, like you can't go there. You can't go to a family gathering or you have to bring all your own stuff. You can't go to birthday parties and eat. You can't do these other things and eat because it's not going to be keto friendly. You can host people over, but the whole diet revolves around that. You can't go out to eat with friends. Everything in your life revolves around being super low carb and moderate protein. So keep the, it's not like you can just go and eat chicken breast. Like it's high fat, moderate protein next to zero carb. So we can't go that route. But for people with epilepsy, it seems to be beneficial to go to ketogenic. Well, for them, yeah, that improves their quality of life. Whereas for you as a listener, it might diminish your quality of life. And therefore, you're going to fall off. You're going to go back to old habits. Your life is going to become more enjoyable, but then you didn't really learn anything of how to keep weight off if your goal was weight loss during it. And then the weight 
comes tumbling back. So I kind of got an off topic of the food is magic, but th- there's no diet protocol. There's no supplement. There's nothing that is completely magical. Sheila Jet is something that popped up. It is a tar from the Himalayas and they're like, it's full of minerals and amino acids and stuff. And it's like, yeah, but which ones? And why can't we just get those from like other sources? Like what's so special about it? And there's nothing really special about it. It, it popped up. It got really popular. And now it's on the, you know, it's going, uh, it pops up every couple of years. A lot of these pop up every couple of years. There's not really anything to support. There's other things that pop up and they're like, oh, it, ketones are another one. Uh, I saw someone yesterday in the Facebook group, like asking about ketones. I'm like, people are still talking about the ketone supplements. Like what a waste of money. Like, no, don't, don't buy it. There, there's no magical solution. Food is food. Now food exists on a continuum. There's food that is definitely health promoting. Most of the time there's food that is potentially negative to your health, like alcohol. There's food that is kind of neutral. And then everything in between. So for example, diet soda, I would put at neutral to slightly negative. And this is where the, why the good versus bad doesn't make fucking any sense because people will be like, I would never eat this. Well, like how bad is it? Seriously, the dose makes the poison. And when we look at artificial sweeteners, you have to have so much. Now, if you choose to avoid it, that's fine. But also realize like, you really do have to have a shit ton to see negative effects. So do- dose makes the poison. Also dose makes, you know, any health benefits. Um, so with diet soda, it would be slightly negative. Whereas something else, if someone replaces alcohol, like I just need something different at night. And usually I have a beer or usually I have a glass of wine. And we replace that with soda. We know alcohol has a negative effect on health. So now we've replaced it with diet soda. Well, we've gone from very negative to slightly negative. That's a big stepping stone. Okay. We know alcohol is actually bad for us. Actually increases our risk for cancer. Destroys a lot of our gut microbiome. Because, you know, what does alcohol do to bacteria? I don't think I have to tell you. Um, It's why things get wiped off with alcohol when you go to the doctor's office. Um, but, or hand sanitizers, alcohol. So we have actually made an improvement because we went from very negative to a slight negative for our health or even neutral. Okay. Well, the net is positive in there and that can be a stepping stone to, okay, well now I'm working on hydration. So now if the person starts flipping everything, starting to eat 80 to 90% of their diet on the side of neutral to health promoting, then that little bit that is slightly negative to your health isn't going to make a big difference. And that's the conversation people aren't having. It, nobody's talking about that because we talk about the everything on the promoting health side, almost like magical collagen, for example. It, it's not magic. Is it a supplement you can use that might help your hair, skin, nails, and joints, maybe it might help you. My wife really likes it. We keep it in the house. Um, it's terrible for post-workout recovery. Um, is alcohol actually bad for us? Yes. Is sugar bad? Sugar is going to be right in the middle of neutral. It is literally going to be right at neutral. It's not going to be slightly negative. It's not going to be slightly positive. It is going to be neutral. Athletes need a lot of sugar if, if, say, like a marathon runner needs a lot of sugar. Okay, well, they're going to be burning it off immediately because they're using it for sports performance. Someone else having a lot of sugar and eats too much, well, the dose makes the poison. Now it becomes negative to your health because it causes you to overeat. And usually that's going to be paired with fats and potentially salt, which makes the food hyperpalatable. Think potato chips, Cheetos. Donuts, cake, cookies, most of those things. What's in it? Sugar, fat, and salt. Like 
that's that's the combination and all of them the two differing degrees like a pretzel is going to have more salt than a cookie but they both have salt um but they're both both have fat both of them uh pretzel doesn't necessarily have sugar but it has refined carbs um and you might dip it into something that has sugar so those are those are going to be the examples there where okay we have to think of things like that rather than good and bad destroys health promotes health and when you do that that's where food freedom lies that's where you want to get to because you don't fear food and this is something else i see where people are like i don't just don't even know what to eat so i'm just gonna give up but when people say that they go back to eating hyper palatable things they're like well now you're saying kale's bad and blah, 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 blah. so now i'm just going to go back to eating cheese sticks every lunch like that is not what we we should do uh we should have a conversation about hey kale is not everyone likes it it does have some oxalates in there which might be problematic for some people but for the most part everyone's going to be fine with it if you're like me and you have issues with lots of raw leafy greens maybe you limit your raw leafy greens but that's a conversation you should that's a more nuanced conversation than what people are doing online of like kale is bullshit broccoli is bullshit just don't eat it like well why well it makes you bloated i don't get bloated from it so what's the problem you get bloated from it okay why are you getting bloated and people don't want to go down they don't want to figure that out that's the simplicity of the carnivore diet and the appeal and that's why it took off compare that to the vegan diet like vegan diet is not easy there's a multiple nutrient deficiencies you have to figure out where you're getting things from and not everyone wants to take supplements so you have to figure out where you're getting some of these food items from or some of these micronutrients uh, you have to figure out where you're getting protein from you have to balance everything make sure you're not going way over in calories um, you're getting all the fats you need. It is much more difficult than the just eat steak two or three times a day. The simplicity of it is what appealed people. Oh, my bloating went down. I don't have to think about a thing. I just eat steak. I like red meat. It tastes delicious. Great. But then we're seeing people at 35 and 40 having heart attacks because they're following the carnivore diet and they don't realize they respond negatively to high amounts of saturated fat, which about 40% of the fat in red meat is going to be saturated fat. And on carnivore, you can't do lean protein because we get into the whole rabbit starvation thing. We can't do lean protein. So you are basically doing keto, just eating meat. Maybe it's not as high in fat as keto, but you're basically doing keto so you have to have fatty cuts of meat which means it's a very high saturated fat diet which we know is not good for us long term some people do fine they don't respond negatively to saturated fat and this is where you have to figure this out on your own um i did through 23 and me um they found that i do respond negatively to high amount of saturated fat. I am more likely to put on body fat with saturated fat. So saturated fat just, it doesn't bypasses even getting used for energy. It just automatically goes to, once it gets stored. Um, so that was one of those things figure out. Okay. Like I can't do a high saturated fat diet. Uh, there's also family history of heart attacks, high cholesterol and other things where I'm like, that's not good for me. You don't have that history. And maybe you're like, well, I eat saturated fat, I eat coconut oil and beef and all this stuff, and my cholesterol is perfect. Well, then you might not be responding to it, which is fine. For you, that works. Or you're like, well, my family has high cholesterol. Well, that's going to make it worse. And that is a risk factor. And that's the other conversation people have is like, oh, don't worry about cholesterol. No, it, it's a risk factor. High cholesterol it increases our risk. And that's the way you want to look at a lot of these things is it increases our risk by a certain percentage. At some point, that percentage comes true, but the higher you make that percentage. So if you already have the genetics for high cholesterol, 
you add saturated fat on top of it. You add um, large amount of calories, so you're gaining body fat. You don't exercise. All those things add up, so your risk for disease goes up. Ex- I'm not sure what the word exponentially. That doesn't sound right coming out of my mouth. Um, it might be right, but it doesn't sound right on my end. Um, so it starts to increase versus, okay, some of these things we can mitigate and maybe occasionally we eat red meat and I keep my cholesterol. Maybe it's slightly elevated, but it's not so much that I need to go on the statin different. That increased risk is very, very low. Like, uh, it's slightly elevated, but not so much. My doctors that concerned. They said we could use a statin, but I don't want the side effects. Okay. Well, um, this is not medical advice, not medical advice, but you might decide, and I've had this conversation with people where they decide, I don't want to take a statin. I don't like how I feel and the side effects on that. Okay. Well, we're only going to be able to get you down here. You have to accept the risk factors that come along with that. Um, but we can do whatever we can to help you. We can increase fiber. We can uh, supplement with omega-3 to make sure we're eating lots of fatty, you know, cold water fish. We can do all these things to help bring your risk down. Um, again, I think we're kind of getting off the food isn't magic because there, there's just so much negativity. Uh, and I think I see more. I see more of the stuff because people are responding with, um, you know, not not eating this processed food, not eating like some processed foods, totally fine. Your body will be able to utilize it just fine. It's not going to destroy your health. It is fine. Um, on the flip side, eating like the homesteading channels, and this is big on my channel because – you know, my wife and I eventually want like a small little homestead type thing, not like full on homesteader, but like a small, little more like a projects weekend type thing, um, like a garden and some chickens type homestead, not the full on thing. But I see them where it's like the bone broth, bone broth, not magic. It's it's collagen. It's, it's not magical. Is it good? We, we use a lot of bone broth in this house, especially fall through winter. It's not fucking magic. They're like, oh, it healed my gut. And I like to drink a cup of it every single day. It's also very high in histamines. And if you have an issue with processing histamines, you have a lot of allergies, it's going to be an issue for you eating, drinking that. It's not magic. There's pros and cons to it. Um, and personally, I just don't want to drink that. Um all the time. Like I can't imagine like waking up in the morning, like I have a steaming cut of, of hot bone broth. Like I'll do it when like I'm sitting in the tree stand for deer season. Um, that's pretty good in the cold, but most of the time I'm not fucking doing that. Um, just to like drink as a drink. Now, like this is like a snack or something. That's how I use it in the feel. Like I need something warm that I can kind of have as a snack. It's going to hit protein and then I might have something else with it and it's going to help hydrate me. Um, what else? They have all the fermented veggies, which do have a ton of health benefits. My wife and I were talking about, we need to get back to it. Um, but again, it's not magical. If we really need to improve our gut health, we might need to go in with a high dose, which is a supplement of a probiotic with multiple strains in there, not just be eating kombucha and some sauerkraut that you made at home. That's that's great for maintenance. That's not magic. Raw milk's not magic. We're not going to go into those details there because uh, that is a shit show right now. Um, what else? What else? Is, there's a few other things on those channels, but point being, there's no magical food or supplement that's going to heal all. When you hear about that, one, it's immediate red flag. And we want to go and look at studies. And you can do this with supplements easy through examine.com. It's if something pops up and they're like, oh, did you see, you know, I heard, I'm like, you know what? I haven't looked into the supplement for a long time. I don't have time to go through and comb over every single thing of research. The thing is they do it. That's their job. So they go through and they show you the effects. So it might do what it says. Like, let's say it's fat burning supplements. People who have this supplement burn fat. 
they lost more weight. And you're like, great. It's $80 a bottle. Let me go check it out. And you'll see for the human trials and it'll say, it gives you how much of an effect there was by the arrows so like negligible, no effect, slightly negative, slightly positive. Um, and you're like, wow, like people lost like 0.2 kilograms m more using this than the other group. Okay. That's like half a pound more. Is that really worth it when it's $80 a bottle? Like, no, it, it's not. So you can go and look at all that stuff, fish oil, multivitamins, ashwagandha, ginseng, beta alanine, creatine. You can go and see and see what the magnitude of effect is on human. That's the thing. Human trials. Um, if it gives, and it'll give you other information of like what the typical dose is. So like with my wife's PCOS, we need a supplement for it. And the common thing is inositol. Okay. Let's go and look. And yeah, it has a positive effect and it justifies the cost. Now I find it like just as itself, there's a lot of PCOS supplements out there and you're like, what the fuck? How is it like $60 for a 30 day supplies when I spent like $15 for a 90 day supply of it? Like, cause I get like not the name brand stuff or it's like the special formulation. And then like, okay, these other ingredients, do they work? Do they help? Nah, eh, not really. Really what we need is this inositol. And if you want that other stuff, we're going to get a separate supplement that doesn't have the pink tax, which if you're not familiar with that term, that's the uh, name for uh, women's items, like the pink razors, the pink, which is deodorant, anything like that. Like they mark up slightly for women's products when like, like if you're shaving your legs, like as a woman, some of the men's razors work just fine. So you don't need to, but they mar will mark those up, um, which is weird, mar like really unethical market marketing. Um, but you'll see that with supplements too of like, you're like, what the fuck is this? So they, I mean, they do it with men, but it's more common with women with fat burning and other things. Women generally take up like 80% of the consumer market, I believe. And you're like, this supplement's shit, but they marked it towards women. You'll see protein powder for women. And it's like, it's a whey protein or it's a vegan protein. Why is it this much for this little two pound thing? The five pound thing away protein right here costs the same. Like it's the same quality and everything. What the fuck? In fact, the other one's actually better quality, but it's marketed to women. So you have to be aware of that too. Like when you're searching for these things and trying to figure things out, be aware. I, I try to stick other than like my multivitamin to like single ingredient supplements. Um, for the most part, like a A, D and K or a D and K supplement, obviously like a multi vitamin or a multi mineral type supplement, there's going to be multiple ingredients, pre-workouts, there's going to be multiple ingredients. Um, but as much as I can, I try to stick to like single ingredients because it saves you money, especially when one or two ingredients are going to give you the most bang for your buck in terms of the effect. And when you go and buy bulk, like you can go on Amazon and buy from like bulk supplements.com. You can get a whole big bag and they tell you the dosage, like this many teaspoons for this, you can buy a big old bag of the stuff and like, okay, this costs the same as this little 30 day supply. I have like a four month supply now. No, it, it's not in the super convenient little container. It's in a big old bag. You have to go and get like a cheap uh, teaspoon or quarter teaspoon, whatever the dosage is. But they tell you on the bag what it is. So you can go and look and see what you'll need before it even arrives. Um, so coming back to wrap this up as we hit the 30 minute mark here. Food, there's no magical food. This isn't Disney. This isn't Harry Potter. There's no polyjuice potion that you can drink. There's no love potion. There's nothing like that that is going to magically change everything. There are certain ingredients that when you put other lifestyle factors into play, let's say it's a libido supplement. We're going to talk about sex for a second. And if you weren't paying attention, now you are. If we take that, a, a libido enhancer, it's not going to really have all that much effect other than maybe placebo effect unless you put other things into play. You start working out. You start watching your nutrition. You start doing these other things. 
then it you might notice a bigger difference with it. But in general, if you just take a supplement of like a libido enhancer, it's not really going to have an effect other than placebo. And placebo affects a real thing. This is how fat burners work. The, this is literally how fat burners work. So, and it's how some of the muscle building supplements work too. So what happens is you're desperate for something and you're like, I'm going to go and spend 50, 100, whatever amount of money on this thing. It's going to help me lose weight. And it's basically glorified caffeine. Okay. So you just dropped all this money and you're like, okay, I, shit, that was expensive. So I want to get the most bang for the buck. So I'm going to work out or I'm just going to make sure I like walk every day when you weren't before. And I'm going to, I'm not going to really change my diet, but I'm just not going to eat as much. I'm like not going to get seconds. I'm going to stop when I'm 80% full. I'm not going to like stuff myself every single day and I'm not going to drink alcohol. Um, I'm going to go to bed on time. I'm not going to stay up super late because I heard like that's going to inhibit fat loss. Um, so what we did was we cut out calories, we increased movement, and then we're getting more sleep. So without the supplement, you would lose weight just doing those things. But that's the snowball. And it can be a powerful tool. Like you can, this is also like how you kind of tie other habits in. You can use the same phenomenon with other things. And this is where I say like, maybe it's your nutrition or may, what's the one thing to kind of like get you going for the rest of the day? Because if you're like, oh, like when I wake up in the first thing in the morning, get my workout in, it sets the tone for the day. Like, yeah, because now you're like, well, I already got my workout in. So I know I'm going to be sore as fuck tomorrow if I don't eat right. So I'm going to watch my diet. And I busted my butt. That was a really hard workout. I don't want to go and eat 14 pancakes. Like I'm going to have like a, a balanced breakfast. I'm, I don't want to like keep doing these really hard workouts forever and ever and ever. Like I want to change them up eventually, but my trainer said they're best for fat loss. So I'm just doing that. So I'm going to continue to watch my diet. I'm not going to drink alcohol. I'm going to get, now I'm tired. So I'm going to go to sleep. I'm not staying up and drinking. So, okay, now turn around, work out the next day. That snowballs. You can see where this can be a positive thing too. So you can all use it in that way, but uh, most people do it with supplements. And we saw this also uh, with pro hormones and SARMs with some uh, teenagers and young 20 year olds. Um, so if you are not familiar, it's basically the legal version of steroids that were less powerful, but with some nasty side effects um, with the pro hormone SARMs were safer, um, but way, way less effective. Um, and some of them were pretty unknown if they were going to have side effects or not, which most things have some sort of side effect. And they would come in like, oh, well, now I'm going to die. Now I'm going to do all those. And it's like, why weren't you doing that before? You would get better results. No, it's not even worth it. Like, what the fuck? That's fucking weird. Like, if you just did those things, you would be, but no, I, I want the shortcut. So we're going to take this and then we're going to make sure we're tracking our macros and getting the workouts in and do, getting enough sleep. And you're like, what? Like, just, just do the other things. All right. So that's going to be where we wrap up, guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. And as always, make sure you check out the stuff down below. We are doing that giveaway. So make sure you fill that out. That is going to be only open this week. So next Monday, it's going to be closed. If you're listening to this episode at a later time, sorry, that link's not going to work for you. It might still like, you might be able to still submit the form, um, but we're not going to be doing it after Sunday or Monday. So, um, when it comes to that, go ahead, fill that out, put that, um, do that ASAP. And then if you're not interested in that, there is the master your macros guide. And then as always, I would appreciate it if you left a five-star review real quick. And if you would share it or at least write a review on Apple, as that helps the show get pushed out for more people to find it.